Perfect. All right. Without further ado, I'll kick off. Um, again, thank you very much for having me. Um, my name's Ed Holloway George. Um, I'm a Android engineer. Um, some of you may have seen me before at previous Android Worldwide. So I think this might be my third or fourth time here. So um, thank you for keep on inviting me. It's uh, always, always a pleasure to be here. Um, my talk today is called How to Become Your App's Security Champion. Um, and yeah, that's uh, what we're going to be touching on. So a quick introduction, if you haven't seen me before or you don't know who I am. Um, again, my name's Ed. I'm a senior Android engineer at ASOS.com, um, who are a massive fashion retailer. Um, I'm also an Android GDE. I actually just recently became a GDE. Um, and thanks in mostly to Android Worldwide for starting my speaking journey. Um, I'm a mobile security enthusiast, so I like to tweet and toot and blog and talk about all uh, different subjects, um, particularly mobile security and things I find interesting. And fingers crossed, hopefully, um, you will find them interesting too. So let's quickly talk about what's going to be coming up in my talk. Um, this talk is going to cover a number of things. It's going to cover kind of a reminder to everybody out there why mobile security is important. Um, it's going to kind of talk about how to begin a security champion program at your place of work and ultimately how to become that security champion within your team. Of course, with any talk, um, there's a number of things that you need to know. Uh, the first one is that this is not endorsed by my employer or anybody else, um, that anything you learn in this talk today should be used for educational purposes only. Um, and this is more of a strategic talk about mo mobile security. It's not going to necessarily teach you how to implement mobile security. It's more of kind of a strategic look at how you can implement mobile security within your team. Um, of course, this is recorded and live on YouTube right now, um, but slides are also available online um, via my link below. So if we're ready to go, let's talk about why developers should care about mobile security. I'm hopeful that you already do. Um, if you're watching this, then there's a chance you already do. And the first point is why we should care is that the mobile attack surface is huge and it's growing. So we can sort of think about this as, you know, Android having recently announced there's 3 billion active devices. Now, for context, 3, 3 billion is about 40% of the world's population as it stands. Um, and this isn't necessarily going to include things such as alternative stores, um, Amazon devices, some Asian car um, carriers, for example, uh, Huawei, um, won't be included in those numbers. So the Android ecosystem is huge and it's expanding because we have a myriad of devices now running Android. Um, new form factors such as tablets, cars, foldables, everything is running Android, which means that when it comes to mobile security and Android, it's something we really need to be concerned about. Of course, with any kind of mobile security, let's think about what's really at stake here. And, and for the vast majority of us, the thing that is at stake is our financial, um, you know, kind of revenue streams, our company's revenue streams. And there is a growing financial incentive for malicious actors to, to uh, kind of attack apps and attack um, through Android. Um, this is partially in part due to the recent rise in Web 3.0. Um, now, regardless of what you kind of think about Web 3.0 and crypto, um, that has had a massive impact in the way that mobile security works. Um, for example, uh, $2 billion uh, was stolen in cryptocurrencies last year, um, or sorry, two years ago now, um, which was um, a 60% increase on the year before. Um, and, and also another scary number is that 70% of all fraud occurs on mobile. Um, and that's not just uh, financial fraud, that is all fraud. So the third point of why we should care and continue to care about mobile security is that implementing basic mobile security on Android is not difficult. Um, a quote I like to use quite a lot is, it takes years to build a reputation and a few minutes of a cyber incident to ruin it. Um, I know that you will have obviously seen that quote before if you've watched me at Android Worldwide, but I like to kind of re-emphasize that point. Another point of why uh, mobile security matters and is hopefully something you and your team care cares about is it's quite neglected. Um, admittedly, I ran a poll, so this might not be the most da best data ever. Um, and in this poll I ran, I asked my followers, in your opinion, what's the most commonly neglected aspect of mobile app development? And of course, being my followers, nobody played ball and said mobile security. Everybody said accessibility. But 
I say there's no, no shame in second place. Um, and it also shows that, you know, when we're kind of thinking about things in, in an, the Android kind of world, um, mobile security is right up there with one of the things that is neglected. So maybe this uh, poll wasn't necessarily the best poll ever uh, for this particular talk, but I think it kind of emphasizes the point. So let's now look. Uh, so I've kind of told you why I think uh, mobile security is important, but let's actually look at some real life case studies of why mobile security is important. Um, well, things do go wrong. And to start with, uh, the example I'll give is Walgreens. Now, some of you uh, watching um, worldwide will know who Walgreens are, but for those um, who don't, uh, Walgreens is essentially a huge pharmacy chain in America. And in January of 2020, um, Walgreens discovered an, a, an issue within their Walgreens app, um, particularly in their secure messaging feature. I believe the feature was a feature that allowed um, users to message their pharmacist to uh, request prescriptions, to request uh, kind of res repeat prescriptions, et cetera, and would have obviously included chat of a medical nature. So certainly stuff that you would not want um, anybody to get your hands on. There was a bug which exposed customer names, prescriptions, addresses, and other medical data, which was leaked um, via a payload that could be dumped from the app. Um, what this essentially meant was that a hacker was able to get um, sensitive information for people's um, private medical records and potentially use that in maybe a blackmail situation or other nefarious means. So what happened? Um, with this app and what happened to Walgreens? Well, they were sued for in a class action lawsuit for at least $5 million. I believe that lawsuit is still going on, um, but that number could quite easily easily climb. And I, to be perfectly honest, I think they got, got off fairly lightly here. But this was only a small bug. Um, what would happen if something more major happened? Well, a good example of this might be Klarna in 2021. I think in May, um, many users logged into their Klarna app and were greeted with the um, credentials and if, as, as if they were logged in as another user. Now, that seems quite bizarre how that can even happen, but many people were reporting on Twitter and various communication channels that they were seeing the purchases, the addresses, the contact information, and even credit card details of users that were not their own. So... Obviously, I'm hopeful that you can see that that is a major problem and a major flaw in their um, security. Um, and ultimately, what this led to was uh, a lot of very angry customers. Um, now, you can ask yourself, what is worth more, $5 million in fines in the Walgreens example, or a lot of very angry customers in the Klarna example? Um, and it really depends on your business. Um, I, think, I think lots of very angry customers probably cost Klarna a lot more than $5 million um, in the long term. So those are two real kind of examples of apps where security has gone wrong. Um, and another reason why we want to obviously, you know, uh, have this in the forefront of our mind of why security is important. Um, the final example is, um, obviously I think many of us know that uh, there are some bad actors on the Google Play Store. Um, I think most recently, M McAfee found um, at least 16 malicious apps with 20 million downloads. Um, and 20 million downloads is an awful lot um, for combined, for combined uh, kind of, uh, you know, across these 16 applications. And these applications were very common um, applications that people might download. So things such as currency converters, um, camera apps, uh, QR code readers, dictionaries, et cetera. Um, and all 16 of these apps contained AutoClicker adware. And what AutoClicker adware does is it opens the app and starts simulating clicks on ads. Um, and the scary thing here is that all 16 of these apps originally passed the Google Play Store safety checks. Um, but thankfully, they are removed now. Um, Again, another another reason that we would want to consider security um, potentially is that many, many times over we have seen um, clones of apps. Um, I'm sure that you've seen plenty of uh, plenty of these sort of things on Stack Overflow before or on Reddit um, about people saying my app has been stolen, my app has been copied, people have added ads, people have um, you know modified my game, etc. And this is again another reason why we want to have security. In, um, in the kind of forefront of our minds. So I'm hopeful at this stage of my talk, you will already be kind of convinced that mobile security is important.
But you may be asking yourself, okay, that's all well and good. Um, but the title said security champion. What the heck is a security champion anyway? Well, great. I'm glad you asked because it's uh, it's a bit of a complex one. It's a broad definition that's somewhat loosely defined within the industry. Um, but there are kind of some common hallmarks of what a security champion means. So what I will talk about first is kind of the idealistic um, situation here and um, what a um, champion is in the most uh, kind of ideal sense. Um, and in the ideal sense is that you work in a company that has a cybersecurity team, or at very least somebody that's in charge of cybersecurity within your business. Now, you might well work at a large organization and have plenty of cybersecurity engineers, or you may well work at a small company where that cybersecurity engineer might also be you. In this kind of ideal world, we would have the cybersecurity team and other teams. So most likely you are going to be within the other teams. You're going to be a developer potentially within the mobile development team, or you're going to be working in you know, another area of the business. Champions sit bang in the middle of these. Now, you're not necessarily a cybersecurity engineer, and you aren't necessarily um, an expert, but what you are is you are the bridging point between the two teams. You are the kind of what I like to use the, the um, sort of analogy of the Rosetta Stone. If you know what the Rosetta Stone was, it was a famous Egyptian stone um, that translated um, Egyptian hieroglyphs into lots of different languages. And that is kind of how um, we learned to translate between those languages. So you are taking your team's language and converting it to cybersecurity so you can kind of talk to cybersecurity and work better with that team. Um, and likewise, cybersecurity can talk to you and that information can be absorbed by yourself and then transferred to other teams. Um, so with that kind of in mind, that is our kind of ideal, uh, ideal kind of, I guess, um, picture of what a cybersecurity champion is. And this might surprise you, but you are already one. So um, that's the good news. That's the good news of the talk. Um, it's not over yet, but you are already a cybersecurity champion. Um, I've kind of tricked you. You didn't really need to come. You already, already are one. Um, but maybe not just yet. So we, let's talk about kind of the life cycle of how you can become a security champion for your team. Uh, let's start off at the beginning, of course. Um, you need to be somebody that's interested in mobile security. Um, naturally, I think if you are watching the talk right now, then you probably already are. Um, you need to be kind of in a position where you're looking to improve the security culture in your organization. So certainly, I think there's always room for improvement here. But certainly within mobile teams, I think this is an area, as we've seen previously in this, uh, in this presentation, where it's certainly lacking and something that we can improve. You need to be somebody that's going to be willing to learn or lead by example. So you're going to need to be that kind of mouthpiece for your team um, to you know, talk about security problems to not only cybersecurity, um, but also other developers within your team. And finally, you're going to need to have the ability to kind of pass on knowledge to others internally. Now, now that might be external stakeholders. It might be um, upper management. It could be you know, anybody. So you kind of want to have the um, want and know how to kind of do that. So, OK, this is all well and good. But what do we actually want to gain from becoming a security champion? Well, we want to get more knowledge in the key areas of mobile security. So mobile security as a whole is, a, is quite a large um, quite a large subject and something that I know that we've um, you know talked about at Android Worldwide before and only really scratched the surface. Um, hopefully you saw Ingmar's talk earlier um, and that will have certainly opened some doors there. Um, but yeah, we want to um, certainly gain uh, not only our own knowledge of mobile security, but we also want to improve our team's knowledge of mobile security. Um, with that, we also want to make sure that we write code with security in mind. Um, when we're writing code, I think we are often thinking about you know things such as making sure that we're writing clean code and we're writing following best practices. Um, but security might not necessarily fall into that category occasionally. And certainly when we're working on code, we want to be making sure we're writing it with that security in mind. Um, of course, you want to be following security best practices. So um, I've done a whole um, load of talks about kind of the OWASP uh, top 10 for mobile um, that hopefully you will uh, watch this and want to learn more about. So please do uh, check out my website for those. And um, they are previous Android Worldwide talks. Um, 
and certainly there's plenty of best practices depending on your particular uh, focus within in within mobile um certainly uh the, the security concerns of a um, mobile app might be slightly different from that of an android auto app so please make sure that you follow the best practices and ultimately we want to gain um, and i think this is the kind of ultimate goal of what we really want to um gain from becoming a security champion is to make our app more secure as a result so becoming a security champion and that champion within your team, um, your personal aim should be to make the app more secure. So uh, let's talk about end goals. Um, I've kind of uh, broken these down into kind of three key goals of what we would really want to get out of being a security champion um, and a security champion program. And the first is a leadership buy-in. Um, leadership buy-in is incredibly difficult to get at some places. And in some companies, you will get full leadership buy-in straight away. Um, this isn't something I'm going to touch on a lot here, but please do feel free to ask me some questions about my own personal experience with this. Um, but you would what, definitely, when I say leadership buy-in, what I'm saying is that you want to kind of have the support from the business to not only work on maybe your day-to-day, -day, so maybe um, you do feature development primarily, um, but also spend X amount of time of your uh, of your week or of your of your day looking at security issues and making sure that you are that champion between um, the two teams of cybersecurity and development. Ultimately, uh, the the kind of aim and what we're going to talk about um, shortly is that the the kind of uh, the stratospheric sort of look down at the uh, at this kind of program would be that we want non security people performing security related tasks. We want you to become an enabler to to teach people how to think securely, how to write code securely, how to perform their general day-to-day -day with security in mind. And this is kind of where we um, are getting to, is, is we have a self, is, is we really want to create a self-sufficient security champion program. Um, and by that, what I mean is a, um, a kind of a network of, of different security champions within your business. Um, we'll go into more detail um, about that shortly. Um, because we're going to be talking about how we set one up. So let's say that we you've now convinced yourself that you want to become a security champion. You want to be the go-to person when it comes to security in your team. But how do we set up a security champion program where it's not only yourself becoming a champion, it's other members of the business or other members of different teams, maybe iOS, if you have separate mobile teams, or maybe back-end, or maybe front-end, or... Everybody in your business can become a security champion. And this is how we, you're going to do it. So the first kind of things you want to think about is the key principles of what a security champion program means. Now, the first thing that we want to think about is the vision. Now, the vision of the program is kind of where do we want to end up with this program? You want to capture the long-term goals of the program. It might be reducing the amount of security issues. It might be it might be writing code more securely. It could be as high level or as low level as you want. Um, and this is kind of, I think, the most important thing to think about when creating a champion program. Second of all, you want to find the participants. So who are you trying to reach in the champion program? Is it going to be for developers? Is it going to be the wider business? Is it going to be, you know, you can start small and then work yourself, uh, work, work it up. And I think that's the best kind of approach when it comes to participants is making sure that you know when you're setting up a champion program who your target audience is. The next one is environment. Now, environment is going to change for everybody. All of our all of the companies we work for are going to be different. So you need to kind of understand what you're working with. Now, I'm very fortunate at where I work is that I've got a very kind of open-minded development team. I've got a very um, open-minded management structure where I'm where I'm quite able to pitch uh, ideas and not feel that there's going to be any consequences. And certainly, be in a collaborative environment where um, I can certainly, you know, put my ideas out and have a you know a good chat about what's going on. Now, that might not be the same for everybody. So when setting up a champion program and thinking about how to create this kind of champion strategy, um, you're going to need to understand the kind of organization's current state um, and behaviors and how you currently work. So this is going to be difficult for me to kind of give you solid advice here, um, because hopefully, you know, you, you know your environment better than anyone. 
Um, another key aspect of creating a champion program is the general concept as well, is how do we want our participants to behave? What do we want um, champions doing? Um, do we want them presenting? Um, you know, I think a really good example of uh, some activities you can do is is running um, lunch and learns, running uh, kind of brown bag sessions where you're teaching people about security um, or um, upskilling people to think about security. And yeah, this is kind of the um, this is kind of like I say the thought piece. How do you want it to work? Um, which kind of uh, kind of falls into other other categories such as incentives. Now, why would somebody want to become a champion in your champion program? Now, incentives can be as uh, well, they can be as simple as uh, as paying people more to do it. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say that that's uh, always going to be uh, kind of signed off by management, but certainly it's an idea. Um, incentives, other incentives, can be um, a leaderboard system, a um, you know a way of. Uh, incentivizing that people should join the program because you know there will be people that are enthusiastic about mobile security but there may be people that need that little push so again when you are trying to incentivize these, these programs kind of think about what gets people going sometimes it will be money sometimes it will be um knowledge sometimes it will be status even you know do you, you know it might just be as simple as uh changing someone's job role or adding something to their linkedin to say they're a champion of uh, security within the business that might be enough incentive to get you know like-minded people in a room together to uh discuss security and improve your app's security um delivery again this is kind of how are we all going to work together how are you all going to um how are you going to kind of uh, you know implement this? So again, I think this is surrounding uh, a really good a really good example here would be the kind of lunch and learns or the um, kind of starting point um, should be yeah very sm sm small group activities working up to um, larger activities. Um, it could be you know starting off with the lunch and learns and working your way up to you know if your companies have conferences or your companies do. Um, you know, quarterly quarterly meetings is kind of presenting at those. And, and you should kind of have that aim as part of your original vision. And finally, um, I think tuning is the most important step. This is the kind of iterative step where we measure success and we work out how our champion program can um, improve and what can we do differently to make sure that we are um, always kind of thinking and improving our champion program. So... That's a lot of uh, kind of lot of high level and uh, maybe sort of um, strategic thinking and maybe not necessarily um, the nitty gritty that you might be uh, tuning in to come and watch. But certainly, um, I'm hopeful you're still here. And let's say that we've convinced you up to this point and we want to kick off a champion program today. Um, well, at least kind of after the conference. So. The first thing you can do to kick off a security champion program within your business is to find a handful of like-minded engineers or individuals. Um, hopefully, uh, they were probably um, within your team already, um, and you won't need to go looking far. Um, but certainly having uh, that kind of core um, you know, handful of people that want to improve the security within the business, um, usually engineers, is a good place to start. I would start a regular lunch and learn or brown bag session. Um, and that's a really good way of kind of talking about security in a, in a non-formal um, way, um, talking about kind of how you can improve the app. Maybe, you know, even a chat around a coffee is better than nothing um, to get everybody talking about um, security and having that in mind. The next thing you're going to want to do is make noise internally about what you're doing. Tell your manager, tell your manager's manager, um, tell the CEO if you're a company where you can do that. You know, make sure that you are making noise internally, that you are um, investigating security, interested in security, and interested in creating a security champion program within your business. Um, another thing to do is raise the profile of security tasks within your app. Certainly, um, I think the majority of us uh, won't have perfect apps. Um, I'm hopeful that uh, your, none of your apps are perfect. Um, and certainly, those every every app will have a security task or two. Um, we'll talk in a minute how we can kind of identify those. Um, but 
make sure that those uh, security tasks are raised as a high priority. If you are looking at security tasks and there are security issues within your app, that should be ringing alarm bells within the business. And finally, speak to your manager and um, CISO if you have one. Um, not everybody is going to have a um, cybersecurity team, but if you do have a CISO, make sure that you talk to them and um, you're working collaboratively at the start um, with uh, your cybersecurity team. So I'm going to move on to um, kind of some success stories. Um, the first success story is a company called Fivetran. Um, Fivetran are a California-based uh, warehouse, a data warehousing company, um, and they launched their program in May 2022. Uh, um, they initially kind of focused on participation, training, and awareness. So what they would do was um, they found a, a group of like-minded individuals, um, brought them all in a room, and then got professional speakers involved to, to talk about um, cybersecurity. And um, they found that to be quite useful. That they did that on a kind of, a, I think it was a monthly cadence. And um, eventually more and more people got wind of what was going on, became interested and started actually, you know, learning, learning themselves out of hours about mobile security. And as a whole, um, emphasis eventually shifted from this kind of training and learning to performing actions. So with help from the cybersecurity team, um, the team were beginning to perform um, security audits of their app, um, were beginning to um, sort of become right documentation and, and becoming sort of champions. And ultimately, um, the way that they kind of implemented the hardest part, which was, I think, the incentive, was um, implemented a gamification system. So this gamification system kind of, um, I believe, gave people ranks. Um, and depending on kind of the amount of security tasks you completed or kind of things that helped the general security effort, um, improved your rank. And ultimately, it became a game within the business, um, which really drove um, engagement and drove um, kind of um, interest in this program. And what I found amazing when I, um, I spoke to Dustin, who was the uh, uh, kind of creator of this uh, program within Fivetran, was that 10% of the entire company was now signed up as a um, security champion. Now, 10% of the entire company, I believe, is 130 champions, which is an awful lot of people who are working day day to day um, with kind of security in mind. Now, that isn't 10% of engineers. That is 10% of every aspect of the company um, were, you know, in their own way thinking about security and ultimately, you know, making the make, making their product more secure as a result. So that is, I, I think, a really great example. Um, but let's talk about kind of, let's go back and talk about kind of how you might implement this. So let's talk about your first ever lunch and learn. Um, now, hopefully this is going to be a little bit more interesting here, a little bit more kind of hands-on and, and, and stuff that you can do right now um, to launch this security champion program at your business. Um, so the first sort of quick idea to get you started here would be um, why not um, perform static application security testing or SAST on your app and discuss the results? So that is a really um, good way of kind of kicking off a security conversation within your business. And what SAST does is um, kind of give you um, an analysis of source code and on your application to um, determine if there are any vulnerabilities in your app. Um, and a really good way of doing this is through uh, tools such as MobSF. Um, I'm hopeful that you might have heard of MobSF before, um, but if you haven't, this is a um, this is a open source um, SAST um, tool that will take a APK and perform a, a static analysis on it. And as you can kind of see here, you it will give you a kind of general score and overview of any security concerns, as well as a prioritized list of any security issues. Um, with links to further info and resources. So this is a really quick, you know, five minute thing that you can do with your app right now to begin that kind of conversation within your business about kind of security issues and, you know, as a starting point, kind of a, a discussion point with your team. Um, there's MobSF does a whole load of stuff as well. It, it shows you the overview of your uploaded app. It can perform also dynamic analysis on your application. So that is kind of running your app and performing um, kind of security um, inspection whilst the app is running as well. Um, 
And again, this is free. This is software that you can download and run locally on your machine um, and get started within about five minutes. Um, the next step from running this SAST is probably to take the report that's generated to your team and manager um, and then scare them with it, um, show them all of the issues that are raised. Um, certainly, you will then want to action the high priority issues and show measurable improvement in the long term. So you can use a kind of MobSF and uh, the tools that come with it to you know, show management and show um, your team that there is measurable improvement happening um, through uh, actively kind of working on these security tasks. And of course, like I say, you want to be actively monitoring this. You want to be making sure that you are um, checking each release of your app to see if anything has been added. And hopefully, nothing has. And yeah, you, you'll improve your um, security as, as a result. Um, so that's one idea. Another idea is um, ensuring that your ProGuard and R8 rules are strict enough. Um, now, this has been a problem, I think, for a long time, is that um, I think many of us uh, use ProGuard or R8 um, and not necessarily experts. It's got its own kind of syntax. It's not something that I think uh, everybody's going to uh, profess to be an expert in. Um, but thankfully, GuardSquare are. Now, um, I'm always thankful to GuardSquare. I think GuardSquare have got some great products. Um, they're not paying me to say this. I wish they were. Um, I know Ingmar has done a talk on Android Worldwide just today, um, and it's well worth checking out. Um, but this is another product that GuardSquare has, and it's the ProGuard Playground. Now, ProGuard is a tool that was originally created by GuardSquare. Um, and the Playground is very similar to um, kind of playground settings that you might be used to for other programming languages. So I believe Kotlin has a playground. I believe Go language has a playground. And what this playground allows you to do is upload your APK and um, essentially test, uh, test ProGuard rules against it. So as you can kind of see in the middle here, we have kind of editable uh, ProGuard or R8 rules. And on the right hand side, we have our uploaded APK or JAR file and a list of classes, methods, and fields. Now, these classes, methods, and fields are interactive and, and kind of display your custom rules in, in action. So if you wanted, for example, to keep a specific, um, a specific uh, model or you want to hide or obfuscate a, a particular method, um, you can test if, whether your rules are doing that um, via this playground. And I would really recommend uh, doing that. It's a really great tool. So the next steps from that are obviously to use the playground to improve your rules. Um, certainly test for any unexpected behaviors. Uh, the really good news here is, is that you, um, you know, can just upload an ABK and this does it automatically. You don't need to do um, rebuild your app or anything like that. It's, it will do it um, kind of magically. Um, certainly explore the ProGuard documentation. I think uh, we all need to do that. And, and as a result, you're gonna get smaller, optimized and more secure builds. Um, so that is, uh, that is the second point. The third point is to, of course, decompile your app and take a poke around. Now, I'm hopeful that many of you, uh, have done this before, but in case you haven't, um, obviously please use this responsibly. Um, your APK file is just a zip file, uh, with some extra spice. Um, you can rename an APK file to a .zip file. Um, you can unzip it. And essentially, what you will get is a folder with lots of funky files. Um, those funky files are the innards of your APK. Um, and it's going to look something like this. So you're going to see a whole bunch of DEX files. And uh, DEX files, for the, those that don't know, are Dalvik executable files. They are similar to class files, um, but they run on Android JVM. And they contain Dalvik bytecode. And it is possible to take these DEX files and convert it to its original source code, although it is a bit of a lossy process. So it's not going to work perfectly, but it is possible to kind of extract um, the kind of core of how your app works um, based on kind of decompiling and uh, converting back these DEX files. So to do that, you might want to use a tool such as uh, JDX. Um, and what this tool does is it decompiles a whole load of different Android files, um, APK files, um, Android archive files, classes, decks, smallly, everything. And what it will do is convert it into a kind of Java output for you to be able to kind of understand how the code is working. Now, like I say, please do this only on your own apps. Do not do this on anybody else's app that you wouldn't, um, 
yeah, you wouldn't want to do that. That is uh, certainly not good. Um, but the way JDX kind of is would display this is very similar to the uh, kind of ProGuard playground. It would show a list of decompiled file packages, classes, and methods for a particular um, for a particular file that you may have uploaded, and like I say, show you the Java representation of your code. Um, now, this is really good for a kind of lunch and learn because um, you can take these and use it in kind of your next steps to make sure that you aren't exposing yourself or exposing any kind of data or strings or um, logic that you might not want to necessarily um, be showing. So again, this kind of works hand in hand with your ProGuard rules to make sure that you are um, you're secure enough. Um, of course, if you can reverse engineer your app uh, based on the output of this is anybody else can. And of course, like I said, you want to make extra sure that your obfuscation is working. So again, this kind of process of going through and decompiling your app um, every now and then is a really good way to make sure that you are doing what you you think you're doing. And there's not only that many, uh, there's not only just one tool to be able to do this. There's plenty of other tools. There's Sneak, SonarCube, AppSweep, um, which again is by GuardSquare, um, and many, many other tools to look into here to be kind of able to decompile your app, run static analysis, um, and make sure that you aren't kind of exposing yourself in any ways that you wouldn't want to. I've talked a lot, but ultimately, um, what I kind of wanted to get at was. Uh, why a security um, champion program in your in your organization makes sense. Um, I'm hopeful that I've done a, a relatively OK kind of a job at that. But if there's one thing you do today, make sure that you check out securitychampionsuccessguide.org. Um, it does a much better job of kind of uh, showing the strategy of how you might create a um, security champion program within your business. Um, it's written by Dustin, who I mentioned earlier, who is a great guy. Um, and I 100% recommend this. Um, it's worth sharing with your team. It's worth sharing um, with your management. And it's worth thinking about. And with that, I think I'm done. So thank you so much again for having me. Um, my name's Ed. Um, and yeah, that was my talk. Thank you. OK, that was a, a great session. A lot of uh, useful information. Thank you, Ed. Uh, so uh, now, guys, uh, if you have any questions, please uh, leave it in the comments, and we, we will answer it now. Sure. There is a, a funny one from Ryan here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Ryan. No, I, I guarantee you. So to, I'll, I'll read the question in case anybody can't see it. But it says, does Microsoft actually want me to pay them with Google Play gift cards? Or is this a scam asking for a friend? Um, G Google Play uh, gift cards are very commonly used in a scam, Ryan. So I think Microsoft uh, probably don't want you to pay um, them in Google Play gift cards. But hey, who knows? I have no idea. Maybe they do. But I'm almost certain they don't. But thank you for asking anyway. OK, any other questions? I can give you uh, two minutes to wrap it up. If there are, yeah, if there are, if there are any questions or if anybody wants to um, kind of ask me anything more about this, and feel free to reach out. I'm available on, um, I'm still available on Twitter. I know many people aren't, but I still am for the time being. Um, I'm also on um, Mastodon. Um, my link is down below. Uh, thank you, Mamou, for putting that for putting that down there. But um, yeah, th there are also a number of guides uh, kind of on my website as well that kind of uh, link in with this talk as well. So um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that'll. Uh... Okay, we have another one oh, from you. Excellent, cool. What? Thank you, Nor, for asking. Cool? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm more than happy to answer this. So it, the the question is, what is the role if a security champion? Uh, in case of a security issue? So that's a great question. Um, like I said, the security champion kind of sits in between um, cybersecurity and uh, whatever team the champion's in. So in our case, it's most likely the mobile development team. Um, and when it comes to uh, security issues, 
um, let's say there's a cybersecurity incident, um, where the, the security champion will sit is again kind of in that middle in that middle stage. So they will be part of the kind of um, incident response. They will be you know the person that is translating kind of what's going on. Um, between the developers and between the cybersecurity team. So let's say that there's a problem within the app. Um, the job of the security champions will be to make sure that the any kind of relevant information is given to cybersecurity, who will probably be champ sorry, championing is the wrong word in that context, will probably be um spearheading the you know the, the response to the salute um to the incident. But you your role as the champion will be to make sure that you are communicating effectively between teams you will be the go-to person so instead of having all these kind of uh i guess the phrase is uh too many cooks spoil the broth you want to make sure that um yeah you are the go-to person for your team to be able to kind of relay any information that needs to go between teams so that's that's kind of where i see that um security champion sitting so I'm hopeful that answers your question, Nora. If it doesn't, please reach out. I'm more than happy to kind of go into further detail. OK, great. Another serious one from Ryan here. Is there a, a good resource for some basics? So for some basic things that beginner, intermediate developers do poorly for Android security? Uh, yeah, great question, Ryan. Um, I'd like to plug, obviously, I'd like to plug my own website. I think I've gone through. Um, a number of times, uh, the kind of uh, some basic things you can do and people get wrong. Um, there are plenty of plenty of uh, resources out there. Um, I try and tweet those. I try and uh, mention those on my website as well. So um, I'm going to shamelessly plug and say my website's a really good place to go. So that, thanks, Ryan, for setting me up for that. OK, another question from Simon. After the static analysis, do you will how to solve the issues, or how do you start fixing the issues? Great question, Simon. Thanks for asking. Um, so when it comes to um, things like running uh, MobSF, um, the really good thing about sort of tools like that is that usually, um, particularly for high uh, priority issues, is that there is usually quite a lot of good guidance and a lot of good um, a lot of good uh, resources within that tool itself. So if you run MobSF and you find issues, you will probably um, find a link to relevant documentation or relevant um, case studies um, that will be able to kind of help you um, kind of formulate a solution. Um, certainly when I'm, you know, fixing security issues, I'm using guides such as, um, you know, to the OWASP, uh, you know, OWASP have got the um, mobile application security testing guide, I think, MASTG. Um, that's a really good, useful guide to have and probably the industry standard guide of a kind of security issues and and certainly goes into detail about how they can be resolved. Um, and yeah, I, w essentially, if I don't know, I would Google. So yeah, you, you can Google. I think it takes, um, you know, a little bit of um, experience and a little bit of common sense to make sure that you probably aren't using the top result of... Um, Top result from Google. Um, a really, you know, and interesting actually. Um, I'm going to go slightly off topic here, but there was a really interesting case recently where I think it was a car manufacturer. I want to say it was Hyundai. Um, if it wasn't, please don't sue me. If anybody's uh, from another car company here, that I'm getting wrong. Um, but it was uh, they used essentially um, to encrypt their um, their media center within their cars. Uh, they used a um, they used some sample source code that was readily available online and what that meant was that they ended up with a cyber security incident when some security researcher checked out their car realized that it was encrypted with a very basic uh you know tutorial and was able to basically own the system and, and be able to install custom firmware etc so um yeah when you, when you google stuff make sure you're googling it sensibly is uh, where i was going with that story yeah by the way i read that it was hyundai <laughs> Yeah, that was a uh, that was bad. So please don't do that. Okay, I think we are done with questions. So thank you, uh, Ed. It was a very very great session. I really enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully see you uh, in the next uh, event. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you everyone for your questions. Ho have a good evening. <laughs>